music lovers and welcome to the woodshed this week we've got one of my dearest friends uh incredible player a guy i've known for gosh maybe 13 or 14 years now mr jack gardner yo how you doing abdi great <laughs> Dude, to be I'm, here man so good man it's good to have you um Man, I think our first time meeting, I always like to do the beginning of the episode, talking about like how we, how we crossed paths. I, we, we had known each other, uh, again, uh, I think through Tom and, and, and uh, Rick. So for those that don't know, uh, you know, Tom, Quill, Rick, and Mark Miller, and uh, Andy James and I were all on Patricia Forms. And Jack lived close to Tom and Rick. And by close, I don't mean next door. Okay. So in, in the United States, you can be three hours from somebody and it's close. Right. So, in, you know, in Europe, obviously the, the, their, their sense of distance is a little different, but, uh, <laughs> there, you said, I remember some of the first times I heard you playing, um, you were doing these like kind of just impromptu jams with Rick and, and Tom and the, and, and the playing was stellar. And then, if I'm not mistaken, you came to Nam that year, right? And that's when we all got to really hang and and, and become friends. And I, I guess I mean it had to be ten years ago. It had to be. It was 2010? Yeah, the first time because I, I think was I only 16 and I had to bring my dad with me to travel to the states or something like that. Yeah. So yeah, my dad was actually at that Nam show, but yeah, we all we all met up with Rick and Tom, didn't we? And, Man, I'm so glad that that introduced me to your playing, really. I think that was the first time I'd seen your stuff. And, it, yeah, Tom and Rick had spoke, spoken wonders about you. But to see it in real life was just, like, mind-blowing, especially at such a young age, you know. See it in front of you is – it's a totally different thing, isn't it, than necessarily videos, like – Oh man, yeah. I think that's something that's. Uh, I, I feel like I'm always talking about that these days. Um, you know, we as musicians are kind of growing with the mediums, and we're making videos. We're doing things like this. We're doing zooms. We're doing skypes. we but there's just something about being in the room with it. I mean, I had every time I've had one of those magic moments, it's never been on a video, or it, it's always been like I've I've, I've stood next to it, like a guy playing and been like holy cow or or seeing the guy on stage and it, it you know that's where you really it, there's just such a when you can hear things like you know the amplifiers hum or if it's an acoustic instrument things like you know the pick occasionally hitting the pick guard or something like that it's like those things are just it, it, they don't translate in in videos and especially in today in in today's over editing world I, I know you did a video this year earlier this year i loved it i was a big fan of the video um and the topic was over ed editing uh ones playing and 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 the uh how would you word it jack like the uh the the present presentation maybe of of a of a playing ability or a playing level or whatever you want to call that and it's been super automated is maybe is there, how, how would you like yeah. the video is great i want i want to get i want to get i'm going to link it um for for everyone watching um and if you haven't checked out jack's youtube channel go check it out it, it's great but the video earlier this year what was that before we dive into the new it record? was basically i know i'd labeled it maybe fake guitar playing which is probably not the right word really but it's 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 all to do with the misrepresentation really isn't it you know so a lot of a lot of these guys what they'll do now is they'll record obviously sometimes note by note separate takes and then glue it all together as yep. if like that's like a one thing you know, and I think the real issue for me was the fact that these videos were all done in the in the sense that it was like an iPhone camera, like you know, it was presented in, in a way of of this is just not ever so haphazardly me warming up. Exactly, exactly. You know, whereas in reality, it's a massively how would you say it's the audio really that's being manipulated in most of the cases isn't it rather and how, than... and how long would it take to actually so if you put up a camera like a lot of my stuff if you're on instagram and yours too is like i just hold the iphone there there i am warming up whatever warts and yeah. all it's like that's what it sounds like uh the video would look like that how long would it take uh you to edit something down to be quote unquote faked or what i mean you're, you're looking at at least several hours of work 
exactly man like right. the splicing together and you know like i even found that on that that original video which i've done i was doing that in a way more complicated way on logic there's actually like a, it's called vary speed where you can just like take a percentage so say if you want to double the thing you just click you know 150 percent and it'll do it it's a slider and it'll do it and it preserves the audio which is just like, it's like what is what is that <laughs> But, you know, even uh, uh, one of the guys who commented on the video pointed this out to me. I still need to research it. But he said in Ableton, apparently there's a pop-up message that comes up and it says something along the lines of, if you're not quite comfortable with playing this at the minute, simply bump up the speed using blah, 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 and it will do it for you there. So that's actually like a pop-up message that comes up in Ableton, apparently. So I need to research that, but I mean, it wouldn't surprise me, man. You know, the way that things are going, especially like... So how do you feel about that? Like, like I guess that just leads us to our first question. I don't want the whole episode. I want to get to my main topic, and, and, and viewers, we're not going to do this for the whole episode, but I do want to ask you... Um, just what's your, what's your innate feeling on that? Like, it, it, obviously the technology is great for a learning, educational, even a compositional standpoint, because I don't think if someone's got an idea in their head and they can't do it in their hands, that shouldn't mean the idea shouldn't come out, right? Exactly, exactly, man. I think it, it's all, it all depends on why you're doing it, I think, at the end of the day, doesn't it? You know, okay. like, I think, like, if this is your musical vision and it's your compositional vision, then cool. I mean, like, think of things like the Doom soundtrack. I'm sure that that's, like, you know, recorded in ways where things are spliced together and whatnot, you know. Like, even even on my, like, on my new release, like, that's, that's program drums. That's things like that. But the, I guess it's in the sense of I'm not trying to present to you that I'm playing those drums, you know, like, oh, yeah, it's all the perspective of the presentation. Right. And I think that's where a lot of us, and I was on the, I, I can't say was, I am on the bandwagon of if you're presenting an iPhone video, it should be an iPhone video. And, uh, I've been so paranoid. I have to be honest with you. I have done, uh, just in this short time of been YouTube and since like April, March or whatever, I've been so paranoid that somebody will say something I've done is fake. So I have, the camera audio saved in files. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just for yeah. like, hey man, here's the clickety click of my pick on the strings or whatever. Why should I have to feel like that? You know, exactly. It's, it's man, the exactly. nature of the way things have gone in the game that like, it's like I've never thought somebody would you know say that I'm fake playing or whatever. And 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 I loved uh, watching kind of the world discover. Is, is it Stefan Torrento or Steven? Oh. Torrento? Yes, yes. Because I mean, he plays at a level where it's like, holy cow, that's fake, and it's not. Yes. It's it's really it's really spot on. Um, innately too, I think, and maybe you'll back this up because of the way you play. I want to talk about. Let's start changing gears here. Um, there's a stylistic thing in playing that when everything is alternate picked, and or what I'll call Tom Legato, Holdsworth Legato, <laughs> yeah. right, where it's the stylistic approach of individual note precision yes. and yeah. there's not a lot of what someone from a um edgar winter johnny winter type of background would have all this grease on the note and all you know what i'm saying it's like so these are two different stylistic things so St stefan St is it stefan or steven I'm not too sure. I think it's Stephen. I've okay. called him that, so I feel terrible. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, same. It's like when you only read somebody's name, you don't know the, <laughs> the pronunciation. Um, anyways, so his style is very individual notes played together. Yeah. He doesn't bend a ton. Like, I mean, yeah. I rarely see the guy bend. There's not. A, it's mostly like a slide up to a new jump into a new position. So with that stylistic, um, He's not doing it, but other guys that are emulating that, that makes it very easy to edit and easy of to course. splice. Yeah. Like yeah. when it comes time to play slide guitar and splice, like we had Ariel on last week, you can't splice slide guitar. You can't edit it because the nature of the way the thing works and the sound, it can't be edited note for note. It can only be edited where he starts and stops and has a beginning and end, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So innately, when you take guys that we both look up to, like uh, I think the common thread for all of us meeting in a lot of ways was Guthrie Govan and his explosion onto the scene, right? It bridged 
American players and British players and the birth of the internet, the guitar community internet, not the literal internet, but like our guitar community. Like he was a big uh, guy that glued a lot of our playing together because he's very greasy. Guthrie can play with a lot of grease and have these, this like raunch and stank on the notes that if you edit it or chopped it, it would sound artificial, yep. but he can also play viciously clean. So stylistically, from that point of view, the nature of what Stephen or Stefan does makes it easy to point a finger at it and go, oh, that's not real, because the style, right? Yes. But he totally. literally is doing it. I, I mean, that guy can really do it. And if you don't believe it, you can get on his Instagram and see the and hear the click hitting the strings and the whole deal. So now, with that said, uh, how accurate is your take on that? Because you have... And this is something I want to get into on your new record, uh, new EP, is you have moments of that grease and those bends that you can, they cannot be edited. You maybe yeah. could have jumped in at the beginning of the phrase and jumped out at the end of the phrase, but you still had to play the meat of the phrase together due to the string noise and the things that happen organically on the instrument. Totally, yeah. No, I agree 100%. Stephen is a freak isn't he when it comes to this kind of stuff but as you say i mean i wonder with a lot of these guys if it's like a stylistic choice because some of them seem to genuinely really like this edited sound you know which uh, for me or you i don't know i don't know about yourself andy but for me when i hear the vibrato where the audio is being manipulated something just doesn't sound right to me it doesn't sit well and i think that's Agreed. Some, yeah, it's okay. like, it's lost, isn't it? You know, in translation. And you can tell straight away when that's not, that's not right or that's not natural, you know? like. But, yeah, I mean... Steve, it's a bit like a like a seeing a, a, a filter on a bikini babe on Instagram. It's like, yeah, I mean, she you, she's obviously gorgeous or whatever. Or whatever you, I mean, like a car picture, right? Where, the, where there's like an artificial lens flare on the fender of a car. Like, these exactly. are just things I think... Doesn't make it wrong. It's just like... To the eye, to my eye, it's not what my taste palette enjoys, right? Easy. And so when I hear that same kind of vibrato that you're talking about, that's an artificial vibrato or uh, a punched-in vibrato, yes, it makes it, it. It just like it's like, oh well, that's not the guitar doesn't sound like that, you know? When I, <laughs> out, doesn't it? Yeah, it sticks yeah, yeah. out straight away. Like I always find it interesting the way that you can sometimes see with like, especially with like playthrough videos. So. For me, I always thought that that was like a live take thing whenever I saw a playthrough. And it was kind of a revelation when I realized well, When we did it back in the day, it was. Like there's <laughs> exactly. videos of like uh, me and Andy James. I remember Andy had a backing track. This was like, God, man, 10 years ago. And yeah. I filmed it on a Tascam. You remember the blue Tascam things? It yeah, was like yeah. a camera and it's like super grainy, awful audio. <laughs> like it was a two minute thing and you played through it. It's like, there was no editing the task cam. You just put it in your, it's like, it literally was a playthrough and yeah. somewhere along the evolution, right. Of, of our community, not technology. Well, a little bit of technology, but like it became where playthroughs were sometimes completely mimed, it's completely music mimed. Videos, isn't it? It's essentially like a music video that just focuses That's on right. that now. Like and, and think, music videos are cool. I love it when Steve Vai holds the guitar up and he's obviously not playing the like that's cool. But when yeah. it's presented as if I'm really playing this in the moment, it's like, well, that's not very cool anymore. Exactly that. For, I mean, for some people, I guess that doesn't bother them. But for for me, and I guess for yourself, like that's kind of where the lines get blurred, isn't it? Because you and it's just taste. Yeah, totally. Yeah, because you you might have an idea of a player. I'm sure you've experienced this before, Andy. Where like you know you've seen the videos and stuff like that, and you think, oh my god, this guy is a freak. And then it comes to real life, and you're like, what's happened there? Like you know, you think, oh, is it the gear? Is it you know? Oh, maybe it's just it was an off day because we all have off days, don't we? But was you know, he hung over or something? Yeah, and you start <laughs> yeah. seeing consistent cell phone videos of live performances. Yeah, and you're like, oh man, it's not really that on, or it's, it's so it became it, it's so artificial that it becomes. I remember a huge controversy, and there's no need to really weigh in one way or the other, but yeah. there was a huge controversy regarding a live performance of Rings of Saturn. Yes. That was a huge controversy in our community, in the guitar community. When I say our, I mean all of us, the viewers, the listeners, the music fans, the players. It was a huge controversy. And it's like, when it gets to the point of controversial, I think 
have has your artistic vision taken a back seat exactly. exactly you know and at that point it's like have you succeeded or failed not in what you're not if you can't play it or can play it that's almost secondary at this point it's like now we're talking about if you did or if you didn't rather than what the actual art is what the music is exactly. or what the, the performance is jesus you know it's just like yes. it gets so convoluted in why and the how and it's just like holy crap i don't even get it so with that said i think that's a great segue into um something that i am so proud to say and 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 sometimes i get ashamed of what i say online because i'm so kind of just like ah it's my opinion you know but uh a while back i went on a tangent on guitar hour podcast i love those guys and, and i was like why is nobody making records? Why is nobody making albums? I was like, I've got all these dudes that I love that don't have records. And at the end of the day, this is a big personal mission statement for me is like make records because I don't care if you can play Guthrie Govan solos. I don't care if you can play Brent Mason solos. Of course that's cool. But at the end of the day, I want to hear Brent play Brent Mason solos, right? And I want to hear these guys my friends, the people in the community that I look up to and, and look across the board and see Vicious playing, I want to see your statement. And, man, have you come out of the gate with a statement. Man, Jack Gardner, <laughs> uh, so proud of this first uh, outing. You sent me a drop, Dropbox links, and I got to kind of listen to it. And then the next week I got to listen to it, and I finally got to do something I've always wanted to do, which is just put it on – my phone and drive down the road and listen to, I, I listen a lot in the car, you know, in Tennessee, oh, we have, uh, you know, yeah. so, so I, I, like you get to hear someone's playing regarding their, their playing and their musical mission statement without it being some YouTube yes. thing without it being a backing track or whatever. It's like, okay, man, yeah, you're playing, you know? And it's like, tell us about, um, tell the viewers the, 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 the launching off points there's so many interesting topics on here that i want to talk about and i want to cram them all in uh the joint efforts with your co-producer i guess it's fair to say uh, a wayne a wayne yeah. yeah who's so cool I, I dig what he does you know and and uh tell us about what led you into this path because from my perspective it's got all this great guitar stuff that i like and there's a huge guthrie influence which i like and by that, I don't mean technical firepower. I mean the slippery little lines, these little moments of a slight bend and a slide and a fall off. I want to, I want to actually ask you about some of those techniques and maybe get you to show a couple. There's some really clever heads, and most importantly, I can remember the songs. Like I can hear right now, I can hear Larkin Lane in my ha in my head. I can hear the tempo. I can hear the groove. I can hear the chord changes. Oh, that is something that's being lost right now in guitar music because everything's so put together and the nature of the progressive metal scene. It's like I listen to these songs. I'm like, holy cow, this is amazing. And then when the song's over, I can't recall it. Your yes. music and your EP has this huge hook, and I can't tell you uh, how much I enjoy that. And there's a specific hook I'd like you to teach the the class today, the, the woodshedsman, <laughs> which is the uh, the really quirky uh, melody and head section, just the first couple of lines of uh, Serial Killer. Like oh, that is a yes, fun, yes, clever. Yes. So there's all these moments of all these topics that I want to talk about. So man, just give us a, 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 a mission uh, report, mission status report on like how you got started how long did it take you to write it when did you hook up with a wayne and talk about the production aspect you've already said that it was artificial drums and i don't like the term artificial but it was not a drummer playing the drums right so yeah, yeah. man i'm just going to turn turn the keys over to you and I'll just let uh, you talk about the record man thank you so much for the kind words already andy i hope it's not a uh, drove you too mad <laughs> already the album but yeah it all really began i guess like so you'd said to me for 10 years now, you'd said, when are you going to do the album? When are you going to do, when are you going to release the music? And I think it was one of them, like, I never felt like it was good enough. You know, when you hear your own demos and you just think, oh, do you know what, put that in the bin. Like, this, this just isn't vibing. Like, this doesn't sound right. And I guess because I've never really had, like, a, any kind of production background, I had no idea how to make these sound, things sound kind of, 
cool or you know like natural or you know like like you would on a record like it's totally different isn't it when you send it off for mixing and mastering and it comes back and you're like oh this actually sounds cool now i was never getting that vibe because i was right. trying it myself so because yeah, you don't have a you don't have a studio session player kind of background where you've been in the studio where it's at ground zero and everything sounds all weird and nasally and then yes. all of a sudden it starts yeah. opening up as the layers go of on. course man of course yeah yeah like uh, it's never been for me it's always been me and my laptop kind of thing you know and that's that's where it's i guess a bit difficult but I kind of decided when we went into lockdown, like, I mean, I'd had all these demos. So, so some of the demos like Neo, which is on there, that is actually a tune that I broke just for like solo guitar, I think three years ago now. But I'd always had the idea of actually just doing it as like a guitar with say maybe like some orchestration there or piano and never, never knew how to do that, bringing it back to the production element. And then, oh, sorry, I decided, oh, noisy pots. I decided to, um, like spend a whole weekend during lockdown just listening to music that I love. So yours is on there, Junk Town was on there. <laughs> you know, like it was um who else was I listening to? I listened to Eric Gales, even though he's like a blues yeah. guy, I just thought, I want all of these things and all of these influences, where can I go? And it Owain's album came on, yeah, whatever I think it was. And I I'd never met Owain, but obviously I'd listened Where's to he his from, love. if you don't mind to inter if I She's interject. From- Norway, to the north of Norway. Weird, weirdly enough, there's a Liverpool-Norway connection via the university that I studied at for a year, the Paul McCartney Institute. There's tons of like Norwegians go over there. It's famous, our school. So there was a few mutual friends we'd never actually met, you know, like, and then of course in the guitar world, there was tons of mutual friends. But anyway, I was sat here, I think it was a Saturday, and I'd, I'd given myself the day off and I was like, right, I'm going to play video games and just listen to music. And that was it. And his album came on, like I say, I was listening to that on repeat. And then I went back through his other releases. I was driving my fiance mad. She, cause, cause it's such a small flat. I had this music blasting and it was his over and over again. And I said to her, I think I was doing something like the dishes or something. And I went, do you know what? I think I should like, write to him maybe and see you know if he'd be up for doing some production or something like that i was like this guy he's got something quirky about him and he plays keys i was like that would probably be perfect to like mix those styles how did how did how does he get um and 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 i i want to ask you this i'm going to interrupt right there because it's a great point yeah is the new wave kind of overtone that's in this is was that something that you asked of him or is that something that he naturally brought to the table and you go, oh, this is nice. I like this. Which one was that? Oh, so but, oh, and, and if there's, if you didn't even ask for that on the menu, I just hear that. I hear this yeah. like overtone of new wave kind of 80, like 80s uh, house music. Yes. Well, man, we both love the film. I don't know if you know um, Kung Fury. Yeah. You know that yeah, film? Yeah, 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 yeah. Man. yeah. So we like bonded over this kind of stuff. I'll go back to the story about meeting him in a minute, which is weird. But yeah, that was kind of where we thought this is cool. And 1993, I think was one of the demos that I'd sent. And he literally, man, I sent him just bare bones, like guitar, really rubbish program bass, um, synth bass. And he'd send it back to me like within like what, six hours, I think. And it was all of those sounds. And I was- Wow, dude, so cool. So how did you meet him? Sorry to interrupt, but I just thought thought that's such a great point of the record um, that I think our viewers should know is like, uh, it's not just guitar overload. It's got this like nice, really new wave. And you know what it reminds me of uh, is Vice City. Uh, Yes, GTA. Yeah, where you're playing Grand Theft Auto. If If you played Vice City and you're just cruising and you're cycling through the radio station, there's some of those new wave stations. And it's yeah. like, could, if you could imagine this really killer guitar playing on those stations, that's what the record kind of put me in the mindset of, especially on oh, like 93, uh, you know, and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, with, with Owain, essentially, it was a case of, I was, I said to, to myself, right, there's a demo there. It was Sky Blue Pink. I was like, I'm going to finish this demo on Sunday because it was the Saturday they were talking about it. So the next day, and I'm just going to send them it and see, you know, maybe he'll tell me, no, I'm not interested or whatever. Now, this is where it gets weird. He sends me a Facebook message as I'm doing the demo. We've never spoken before. 
as I'm halfway through the demo saying, man, just wanted to let you know, I've been a fan of your guitar playing since like 2013, you know, like old school fan here. He was like, I'd love to catch up at some point. Maybe we can hang or chat on Skype. Oh, and I wow. was like, this is bizarre. I was like, dude, I was literally going to send you a demo today. Wow, <laughs> and he was like, so cool. He, so he, like, he was immediately in. He was like, this is awesome. Man, yeah, literally. We, he sent, I sent to him Sky Blue Pink that evening, and then he sent me back pretty much what you hear on the record the next day. Man, so just you'll like, have to tell him I'm a fan. I've, uh, I got hip to him, I think, through a lot of our, like, you know, Instagram, YouTube, or whatever. I sent him a message the other day because I was such a fan of the, the, how the end product that you guys did. I was like, hey, man. This is awesome. You know, I know you don't know me, but this is awesome. <laughs> oh, man, he'll be made up to hear that. I know he's a massive fan of your playing, like, so. That's awesome. Yeah, he, he, he just, that opened the doors then, because I thought, right, okay, what, where do I go from here? And he just said to me, send me all of your kind of demos that you've got, you know, even if they're, like, if you think that they're rubbish, just send them over. So I think the next one I sent was Neo. And it was like just a, a one take recording of that, that he has literally just gone right. Okay. I'll orchestrate around it. And again, and it's man, so cool. That, that song is almost soundscapey yet again to, uh, obviously I'm a huge video gamer, but it's like, I can see that I can like be in some game that I've never played and hear that in my head. Like that's, that's, that's another highlight on the uh, album. And I think it's so cool. And uh, it's speaking of maturity beyond your years, to put that out on a first EP, which is like take a step, taking a step back. Um, one of the things that I, I think I'm getting from this, maybe you can clarify if you're wrong, if, if I'm wrong. It seems like from my perspective that once you had that moment of mission statement, it was easy to make the rest of the record, right? 100%. So that's the main thing that... Uh, Joe Bonamassa told me we were hanging out one time. I'm not name dropping. If I, if I am, I just have to ring this thing or something. It's like, <laughs> like they do on what is it? Pedal show where you honk a bell or whatever. <laughs> so that was my bell honk. Um, anyways, <laughs> he, he, he and his guitar tech, uh, were like, man, the only thing that we care about, or they were both saying the same thing. It was like, what's the statement? Uh, like every great record has a statement. And it's, it's funny how once you know that direction, it's easy to flesh out the record. The hardest thing to do is be like, what am I trying to say? What do I want to say? Exactly, man. That was 10 years of procrastination on my part of like, am I going to try and do the fusion thing? You know, like, am I trying to go and do, I don't know, like a straight ahead rock instrumental thing like by and all them or, and then it was kind of like hearing his input back was like, this is what I've always wanted, you know, like that I, I didn't know that that's what I wanted kind yeah. of thing. Like, and as well, man, you know this, once you work with someone like that, there's like a bromance there and, you know, you're having fun with it. It's not work either. It's not it's, work anymore. That's right. Yeah. And that's I mean, right. man, that, was, that was April 19th. And then we had all of the demos mixed and mastered by May, was it May 15th, I think? So oh, like that God. went from like yeah. some of those things like Serial Killer, all I had for that was um, the drum groove. And that main melody. Okay, and so with that said, you've got your guitar in your lap. You have to teach the woodshed the little hook, uh, the, the the main melody. T so oh, man, if you yeah, don't yeah. mind, just rattle rattle it off, and then and give us a little one yeah, breakdown man, it, on it. This one is this. <laughs> that that's kind that's of great. <laughs> so uh, so what I hear in that is all the quirky little outside things that. Uh, I love in like Sean Tubbs is playing. Oh man, he so, so it's like a very similar type of thing um, with the cool little double time groove. Obviously, that that one's my favorite on the album because it sounds oh, like man. it sounds like something like oh that's it. that's what I like. That's you know? Do you know what? Actually, I'm so happy you've said that because that was the one which I was worried about the most. Like, oh no, I like that one. That's that, that's did. right in my way. That sounds like a, a like something that I I, I would. <laughs> If we ever do a show together, I'll be like, I, I want to play. Yes. I want to play. So, so talk about it. Is, it, what, is it key B? Is that what key is it's in? So it's in E, actually. It's so in the E, okay, okay, okay. Like, I think there's like a, there's this harmonic thing somewhere in there. I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's just all over. Like, I'm thinking of an E dominant seventh chord. So anything like that, you know, or maybe yep. even this yep. kind of shape. 
But I thought, you know what, as I'm improv- I think it was an improvised thing that became the lick. So I was around, like, say, thinking in fourths, you know. <laughs> that is very, like, So Frank slow that down. Uh, pretend, too, that everybody is not at your level. <laughs> so, so slow that down and, and that way that way uh guys can can have a little something to chew on here yeah man so i'm thinking really of this e major shape you know if you think of the triads or whatever and i'm just trying to arpeggio i, I guess like arpeggiate it but in fourths would you say so i'm going this first one that is just the straight arpeggio with that little chromatic slide in to the third that's the flat seven there, so that's yep, where I'm thinking yep. dominant seven. There's so that's the nice that everything on those first couple of strings is all nice and symmetrical right there. Okay. 100% man fingers one to three. Okay. Do you roll that? Do you roll that from? All rolled. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So we've got. And that's to say, ah, I think I go to the flat seven on that low. Seven. Yeah. Okay. So, so everything's symmetrical until the low E string, and then you play the pinky. Exactly, and that okay. just feels. It seems to roll in terms of like the picking as well. I think it's all just economy picking for me. Okay, so I let's get it do. one more time, really slow for our viewers. Yeah, man. <laughs> So that is just essentially, it's yeah. that is it really. Yeah, the next line is where you start taking some curves. That's it, man. So I'm, again, thinking of like arpeggios most of the time. So it's like an E arpeggio, but sliding in from the major nine. So I'm going. So there's the, I guess that's the E triad. Uh, where do I go? So there. So you have I'm, a position shift now where you've played here. And now you're going here. So you're reframing where your hand is. Exactly, yes. Yeah. Okay. So leading with, I guess, the third finger all the time, you know, like not the pinky, I'm useless with that. But then I'm going into a B flat major triad, I think. So flat that's five, that thing. That's where the that's where the 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 left hand turn comes from. And and for our viewers, if you're looking for a way just to spice up a single chord vamp take your five chord of that vamp like say we're vamping an e for the for this song and then take that five chord and play that triad just a half step down and that's just three notes that'll give your your single chord vamp a little quirky left turn so now continue on with the head here for our class okay, i think that's where you left off right yeah man okay. and then and there's so the that triad. is just in the major third of the b flat triad Ah, I'll have to play the whole thing. That's I'm okay. That's okay. Yeah, so, so that's just leading me into that. So like, that. And then. Yeah, so. So that's into the major third of E. And one thing you can oh. do, I, I go into the, the fifth major six flat seven. Oh, you're doing it up here. Oh. Yeah, man. Is that a like a little subtle ghost note or is that four individual eighth notes? Yeah. Oh, it's yeah, it is four individuals. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So are you playing like... Like this kind of... Like that? Yeah, so... Uh, you are, yeah. yeah. So this is something I want to point out, too, to our viewers. A lot of times when you're having to jump through weird chord changes, you don't change fingers. You just close the fingers closer, closer together. So if you look at the B flat triad that Jack is playing, watch his fingers be a little more like this. And then when he shifts to the E, they're a little tighter in. So Jack, play that one more time for the kids. Yeah, so we've got from the, from this E triad, I guess. The third finger leads. It bunches together. Because in terms of like visualization there, I'm thinking of Yeah, that. for sure. Awesome. Yeah, so basically the sound would be. It's got almost that like Danny Elfman kind of. That's why I love it, dude. Uh, it's like it, yeah, it punches yeah. my Danny Elfman button, man. That, I know you're a massive fan. Like, but yeah, man, that's that's essentially, I guess, the main part of the lick, isn't it? You know, that's, as you say, it throws in that curveball to get away from. Yeah. From here, this is just that kind of guess like chromaticism around like a mixolydian thing. Let's hear. 
So it's very, kind of almost like, very almost country western swing kind of lick. Oh man, I wish you need to teach me all of that kind of stuff. That's <laughs> so not play that one blood. more time. Play that one more time for the kids. I think I heard uh, it was it six five four minor third major third close close to something. Yeah, back, yeah, yeah, and then back to the root, the octave. So yeah, so do that. Yeah, yeah, man, you know the one. <laughs> that I guess it translates into blues yeah country, more of a blues a thing rock, when it? i hear yeah. things like that very straight and on the nose it always takes me to like things like what brent mason does where he'll play uh you know where he'll play something outside and then like a very country way to like regain that sense of of uh harmonic center right because you're truly doing an enclosure uh, for kids, don't worry about the terminology. An enclosure just means if you're aiming at the last notes being three and one, it means that you're going to enclose it by going four minor third, third one. So you're just wrapping around it. So this stuff is, uh, it sounds all ear twisty, but you don't have to be intimidated by it, right? It's, it's, it's once you kind of see the structure of it, see how it works. So you outline an E major uh, triad, then a B flat triad. Then uh, E, and then I think the fingering. Did you slide up to the seven, and then slide? Yes, and then just, like shift it back. Nice. So this leads into the next bit, I guess, which is so which this. is a cool lick. Play that one more time, and, um, and look at hey, give us the starting point, the shape of your starting point. Give us the yeah. shape of your ending point, and how you glue it together. Totally, man. So I'm thinking here that I guess that would be like position one of a pentatonic. So this note, I'm thinking, right, okay, go down to the major six. Then I'm thinking there's the five, but how do I get to this lower position of E again? So that's where the chromatis is. In. And that's just taking the same shape, playing down the same shape down a half step, and then you end on, on the five note. Yeah, of the of the E triad, and then we're back to that, essentially, aren't we? You so know, play like that e. play that tricky little line right there one more time, and then I actually do go to the fourth there. Sorry, yeah, because this is going to lead to another kind of enclosure where I'm going to go. Yeah, is the typical. It's the entertainment. Yeah, nice. man, that's the one. so walk us through uh, top of it. Play it yep. at 30% uh, speed and play the whole line all the way through. So do you want it from the very beginning? Very top, tip so, top, yeah. Here we go. And then that's the slide. I forget that goes back to the flat seven to lead us into the repetition of the lick if you like you know yeah so now don't you don't have to worry about it thank you for that thank you that's awesome and, um so. you don't have to worry about teaching the rest of the tune but if you could just scope out for a second and be like okay that's the head that i call it over the e chord what yeah. happens next in the tune just right there around the head what's the chord it's so, I don't, oh, i'd have to play it so <laughs> what is it so we're going <laughs> Okay, actually, no, I do something quite cool there that's worth pointing out. So there is a thing here, which yeah. I love to do all the time. I, I think I stole that from Alan Hines, actually. Are you familiar? Yeah, with yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, um, and, and I think uh, if you trace that type of idea back, you could probably trace that even farther back to maybe like a Dave Gilmore type of exactly, thing. Exactly, man. So, yeah, so yeah. talk about what you're doing where you're taking one note and you're bending it, but you're pausing it throughout the bend to uh, actually make each note pitch known. Yeah. Uh, is your tremolo floating on that Strandberg? Yes, thing? that's the only so, issue. That so that's where it really is tricky. So my, my black guitar and all my tremolos float these days. Uh, yeah. Hardtail's a bit more convenient to do that on because it's not wiggling around with you. Um, if your guitar is set up like, say, Ed Van Halen's, where it only goes down, you're in good shape, right? But if it floats, you have to overcompensate um, and, and re it gets really tricky. So uh, 
always have your ears on guys in the in the classroom have your ears on when you if you've got a floating trim because you'll have to really not trust the way it feels you have to trust the the, the pitch so that's so the talk, talk, thing, through that. talk through that what you did yeah but all i'm trying to do i do this this lick all the time you'll notice it all over all my videos if say i'm thinking we are on the fifth aren't we here but i want that flat seven so i'll bend up that's like the tone and a half bend isn't it but to get that effect of like chromaticism to go which sounds kind of plain by itself. I mean, it sounds cool, but it's just not the same. This is a different effect. I'm literally thinking like pitch step, like half step wise down. So I'm going to get that sound. It's all about, as you say, really listening to it, isn't it? And being honest, because a lot of people like they'll do that and set notes will be slightly sharp or slightly flat. And it's more difficult on a floating trim. It really totally, is. You know, totally, when you play yeah, like yeah. a Les Paul or, or a 335 or something like that, or a Tele even, you know, yeah. that thing's a lot more true. You're not, you're not, having, to you don't have to fight something that, uh, I guess to be very specific, as you release the bend, the tremolo is counteracting. So the tension throughout the entire movement is constantly wiggling. On a hardtail, yeah. the tension is always the same and you're only dealing with the string. Exactly, man. Yeah. Exactly. It's 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 one thing to practice, I think, a lot, isn't it? To get used to that feel. It takes right. time as well because your fingers naturally just want to they want to bend up. If, especially if you if you've got your vibrato down, this can throw that out the window, can't it? Like because yeah. you're so used to I've got to keep that anchored there. There's yep. the vibrato. It's forgetting that. It's like almost scrapping that rule book, isn't it? You know? But yeah, so I mean the rest of the song, man, I think it's all around that E kind of seven until we get to the Yeah. Um, I think this is the kind of lick that I play there. Like this And that's a very Guthrie sounding section. Like that's uh, specifically that's very erotic cake sounding section. Uh, way, and that's a big compliment. That's one of my favorite records. Oh, of all man, I'm, I'm yeah. honored for that. Like, the way Owain described it to me when I sent this to him, because this was the one which took forever to write. Like, I just couldn't get anything. This was the first idea that I'd sent, and I thought Owain was just going to laugh and make a joke out of it. And he was like, man, it sounds like animals trying to rob a bank. And I was like, what? What what do you mean? <laughs> like, yeah. Now I get it. There's kind yeah. of like that kind of cheeky element there towards it. Now that ah, it's got almost like a weird kind of disjointed rhythmic. So feel. talk about the chord that you're playing around and why yeah. you're using the wider fingerings that you're using. So I'm actually thinking, I guess, like of like a C sharp Dorian kind of flavor, you know, like so. Anything that's like C sharp minus six or like, you know, C sharp minus seven. I think that's the shape. Yeah. Now, in terms of, I'm actually playing the ninth down here. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this is all about like those clashing minus second intervals. Like, yeah. And then that's, I guess, so that's like a major second, isn't it? But we've, that's quite a stretch. That'd be a difficult one to play standing up. Yes, totally. <laughs> so it's... I can't remember what the other one does. I'd have to listen to it. But yeah, it's getting that. Uh, this kind of almost disjointed sound and the clashes in between. And that's a great thing to add. Um, if you Even if you're not playing like uh, kind of pseudo fusion like that, it's a great sound for all our players out there. If you're taking a solo on, say, Black Magic Woman or Little Wing yeah. or anything in a lonesome kind of minor key, these types of sounds uh, just, I mean, even if you're just thinking plain Jane A, and maybe this is our lesson for our, our beginner students, our beginner viewers. If you're just taking a plain Jane A like that, you can take it up and you get that, that thing that Jack's using. Now he's obviously taking it to a much higher level, but that's just a nice sound. To... And you have, yeah. have something nice to take home with you. Uh, that's the, all those kind of, and then there it is again back there. So just remember when you're taking your A, moving that A up a whole step. If you're in E, moving the E up a whole step, so on and so forth. Jack just happens to be playing in uh, C sharp. So that's where you're seeing that. Man, thank you for that lesson on uh, Serial Killer. That's awesome. One of the other things I want to talk about that's a highlight of the record before I let you go and let you be free. Um, man, there's, uh, I think it's in the head of, uh, 
Lark Lane, I think. Um, but throughout the album, in general, there's some great moments where there's big octave jumps, and it doesn't sound like playing here and then stopping and resetting and playing up here. Can you yeah. talk about the influences that I, I mean, obviously, I, I, I can hear that, that I enjoy the, 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 the things that where you've taken guys that you've listened to and you've added that grease that they have, guys like Alan, guys like yes. you know, Guthrie or whatever. Like Alan Hines, obviously, is, is he's come up several times over a series of The Woodshed. Um, we're all big fans of him. There's moments where you're playing in one position. Again, I'm trying to specify my question to you. And you're getting to a new, new position on the neck in a short amount of time and you're doing it slippery. It's like, can you talk about any moment on the record, any licks on the record that you consider slippery and how you incorporate that in your playing and what makes it slippery? Yes, totally. I mean, there's a few. So the one thing is actually, I think a good three trick that I picked up years ago that I'm starting to see pop up everywhere now is It's that kind of sound, isn't it? You know, it's, like, it's, it's, so almost a Derek truck slick via a guy that's not playing slide. Exactly, man. And, and I, that's I, one, I love that too. It's like, and I think if you take it from Derek and start tracing it back, something that singers do naturally, mm -hmm. right? Okay. And so Derek's doing it all with a slide. Guthrie is imitating that with bends, you know. Yes, totally, man. I, 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 whenever I hear slide guitar, like you guys in the States can do this almost second nature. I feel like we don't have it enough in England to, to really like, you know, get that feel. It's a faux slide that we have to do essentially. That's what it? I do, man. I, and, and the biggest reason is I don't want to stop my playing to get that sound for one moment and then come back to my normal play. Exactly. Do, do, do the lick one more time. That, that little, that little major third thing. Yeah, man. I think this is actually in lock lane. So you could think of like B minor nine again, I guess. this Or, kind or of D sound. major, if you're looking to put it in a major key. So totally, around a B yeah. minor. Yeah, if you so we'd have I guess like if it's B minor it starts on the flat seven, and I'm gonna pick this, but then hybrid pick the G string, so it'll be the flat seven to I guess that's the fourth bent up a toe. Then I'll like slide into that other bend, so I'm keeping that tone bend going. So that's I guess that like, we're going into the the territory of like into the flat seven, aren't we? Like. It's important to keep, I guess, like the pitch there. But as I come down, I'm actually going into the major nine, into the minor third. So I'm getting... And then there's this little trick. Yeah. Everyone's using that at the minute, aren't they? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Been that for like 10 years now, I guess. Yeah, exactly. That, that's like the major and so, nine. So that's deceptive uh, how difficult that is, guys. Um, the trick you need to do is hold the finger on the string the entire time while you're yeah. moving around. So do it one more time. Do it as slow as possible. I know it's hard yeah. to do slow. I just worry about, I think there's a gate on this. So. Yep. So as I get in there. And now drop like, it down. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So notice that at no point did he let off the gas. He only let off the bend. Exactly, man. That's the thing. And it's only, as you say, it's picked once. So it's all just one movement, really, isn't it? You know, and trying to, you've got to be careful, I guess, with obviously the pitches of the bends, but also your vibrato, because that, to me, it gives away is a player really listening to themselves. If that vibrato's wrong, that sounds wrong. Like that doesn't sound free flowing. I think you've got to kind of get. <laughs> To a point where it's all smooth and all connected, it feels like one phrase. Like a singer, as you say, they'll naturally do that when they connect pitches, won't they? Especially in like in gospel stuff and blues For stuff. Sure. Like it's it's one path, isn't it, to that note or and back down. It's not a case of like jump, jump, jump. It's just this smooth. Man, kind of... I that's great. I'll, I'll share with you one that I was uh, working on. I don't have it perfected, oh, yeah. and I'll share it with the class. This is from uh, the Chris Stapleton. Oh, Tennessee whiskey. <laughs> sings a line that's a... Uh, and it's all oh. moments, so I'll try to play it slow. It's filthy. So fast. Oh. Oh. 
I mean, it's oh, really, really it's difficult. Really and that's like one of the like you hear guys that that do almost those Christina Aguilera roles, and it's like taking that idea to like an, another level. And I still haven't figured out the best way to finger that role to make that sound good because you are jumping across it and you have to keep playing the same notes in different positions, you know, yes. it's a really cool, uh, really cool thing. I guess the point is, is listening to the singer to try to steal something versus more so than just listening to guitar player. You know what I mean? That's the, the, the key really, isn't it? You know, I think uh, that with, with the whole record escapades, I think that's where it helped with Owain having like a keyboard player's input. I mean, he didn't write any of the, the melodies or anything like that, but just hearing those instruments in the background, you know, when you get it back, that makes you think differently as well, doesn't it? Absolutely. You know, like I find nowadays a lot of guitarists, I, I mean, I'm guilty of it. We tend to just listen to other guitarists all the time. And because of the nature of Instagram and you see these, you know, the nature of our community, it's like uh, when we all play the same video game, we look at guys playing the same video game. It's the same exactly, like the same exactly. stuff, you know, but we're always amazed when some guy brings something from somewhere else. It's like, oh, why didn't I think to listen over there? You know? <laughs> exactly. Right, exactly. I don't know whether Guthrie ever told you the story of like the Indian guys talking about the rhythms in erotic cakes by any chance. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh man, this this fascinates me. So he, you know, you know, the head erotic yeah. cakes got that crazy rhythmic thing, hasn't he? He was saying that everywhere he's gone in the world like session musicians they struggle they fall apart with that you know like in rehearsals yeah. but he went to india and he said they nailed that in one go and he was like oh guys you know like well done like you know yeah. how, you must have practiced it and they were like no 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 that's just one of our really simple like conical rhythms that we learn when yeah we the ta taki <laughs> taki me da taki yeah exactly. all that stuff yeah yeah exactly man yeah you know and to think that you know, he's wrote that thinking this is well complex. Yeah. For another person, that's that's pretty straightforward. For another culture. Yeah, but to hear, yeah. you know, to 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 think about, you know, things like uh, banjo and bluegrass in those environments, they're like, to us, it's just like, hey, man, it's just 16th notes the entire time. But it's like, <laughs> to another culture, they're like, how does Bay Flag do it? You know, it's like, it doesn't even make sense, you know? Exactly. Man. And it, show, it shows how, how unified we need to be. Uh, this is where we're going to start scoping out and uh, maybe wrapping up the episode. Thank you for being on it. But like how unified we need to be as not only a, a group of guitar players, but a group of musicians, as a group of people. Like we're all on one planet. You know, it's like we need to be aware that like so many things are cultural and we need to appreciate the differences from each other's culture. And yeah. like, also not try to homogenize everything to where we don't have those little spikes that make us individuals. You know what I mean? Like that's a, that's a beautiful thing in, in, in music and food. And, and, you know, and, and, and I think it's a great example of the Guthrie story. Uh, I, he's like, Oh man. So yeah, I'm just, you got practice butts off on this. Like, Oh, actually no, that's pretty with kindergarten <laughs> stuff you know <laughs> it's like, like but man i mean it's it's one of them it brings it back to like you know the whole presenting images and you know like people manipulating and stuff one point i didn't mention in this was Wayne actually said to me with these songs i remember there was one rhythm that like in 1993 it was where i wasn't quite on the grid you know like when i'd sent him the, the stems and whatnot and he'd said to me he was like man I can fake guitar this if you want. He was like, literally, man, he was like, I can move it. And it, we're screen sharing. Yeah. And he showed me, man, just how easy that was. It's to literally like, you know, there it was on the grid. He was like, it's up to you. You can keep that or re-record it. Maybe in a bit of a an old school, I was like, no, man, I'd rather go back. Keep it on. Do, yeah, that's you know? the, so that's that mojo. Here's the thing, too, it's like, when you start recording with real drums or instruments that don't really make sense in our environments, like one of the things that was my mission statement with Junk Town was to have banjo. You know, it's like that instrument doesn't make sense, right? With with what we do and the imperfections of the the thing not being in tune and and things not being like, if you listen to "Life's Been Good" by Joe Walsh, it's not on the grid, but it is freaking perfect. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. it's like the thing that's right. It's like embracing organic uh things of how we push and pull music i mean i remember when i did uh, a, a youtube video on on life by the drop by stevie ray vaughn when you put that to a click track you drop it in you're like okay i, I gotta find what tempo this is at to do my research it's like dude in the first four measures it's at a different 
tempted. <laughs> yeah, it's but unfeasible. nobody in their right mind is going to listen to Life by the Drop and be like, oh, his, t- his time sucks. It's like, exactly. no, actually, his time's incredible. It just exactly. happens to have a little bit of push and pull, you know? Exactly. And that's what, for, for us, I guess, like, I guess you're the same as me. The beauty comes in those little imperfections. Like, it, that's where you can tell who's who. You that's know, like, right. That's where the thumbprints are. Exactly, man. I can tell Andy Wood with no kind of visual reference whatsoever. It's just listening to it. I can tell Guthrie. I can tell Tom Quayle, all of these guys. That's the thing which I guess, like, we run the risk of losing if everything is snapped to a grid, you know? And when everything's edited down, you don't sound any different than the guy that's also putting it to the grid at all. It's like you're so in danger of losing any personality that you may have worked to find. Exactly, man. And I think Wayne was like quite, you know, um, enthusiastic about us keeping this raw when he realized, like, that, you know, hang on a minute. Obviously, I wanted to go more like the fusion thing in the beginning. And then when I heard this back, it was like, no, actually, these are actually songs like this. Maybe we can mix this whole idea of having, you know, like very set heads and melodies and stuff like that. But let's keep the rawness. Let's not quantize things. Let's not go, okay, here's like one lick for like two beats. And then let's record the next two beats of the next, you know, and all that. But I think that's why the record stands out. And it's so good. And it's such a representation, man. It's so hard uh, to come out of the gate. One of the most difficult things with making a first album. And, and, and. I mean, I'm so glad you did it. It's like the the first step is always the hardest. Like getting that first one out. Um, and, and the fact that you took, uh, you made decisions that I think a guy would make on his third or fourth record on your first album. Man, that's, that's great, man. I think that record is really, really special. Obviously, everyone's streaming it and Spotifying it and listening to it. I mean, I see, you know, they see the numbers coming across. Everyone, it's not just me, man. Like, there's a lot of people that really think the thing is special, and I think you really did a great job. Um, Dan, let's do a little housekeeping. Uh, if people want to um follow you, support you, uh, check out all your channels, man, give us give us the dot coms, give us the instas. If there if there's any um brand uh love that you want to send out, this is the time to say, hey, check out whatever guitars, pedals, you know, hit, hit us with all the. All the yeah. stuff, man. So, like, website is where everything is. So you can find the music, the Spotify links, et cetera, et cetera. That's jack dash, I guess that's hyphen, gardener.co.uk. I, I know it's a UK address. Yeah. But, um, yeah, you'll find all the kind of music website, uh, lessons and all that on my website. YouTube is kind of the main one which I focus on these days, I think. Like, Instagram's obviously there. That's jack underscore gardener underscore music i think because someone had taken jack god sure yeah and then, and then youtube i guess you just type in my name to find it you cool. know like but that's the youtube's probably the main one which i'd push for these days yeah all the free lessons are and whatnot gear wise man like on the yeah. album it was super straightforward it was just the strandberg and then i used neural dsp the fort and cali suite and archetype nolly and then a Boss GT1000, actually, like the good guys had sent me out, like, you know, the, the multi-effects board that they've done, yep. kind of like the Helix and stuff. Like, it was that on, like, until next time in 19. Did you print the effects or did you do the effects post? Ah, so, ah, so, you, so delay and reverb, that was all Owain. So I'd sent him the stuff and then he was like, no, I want it dry. Yeah, and then yeah, the, yeah. And the tones were just literally neural DSP. That, so. that, that's how I like to record too. I'll, I'll record dry and then do the do the delays and stuff and post. That way you're not married to them. You know, if that's, anybody's that's out there, if anybody's out there uh, uh, messing around with their first album and messing around with it's, a, I guess, a nice little tip. That way when you start layering in tons of other instruments, your guitar doesn't disappear and you've not wasted a great take. You know what I mean? Dude, that's where it's interesting because, like, until next time, which is like the last track on the thing, that you can hear if you like really pay attention at the beginning. There's a click, which was like a, a fault with the GT1000. It must have been picking up something, but that was all one take. And we were like, oh, but that's the one, you know, but like that's, that's the one. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like orchestrated all around that. And it was only afterwards that we were like, can you hear a clicking noise at the beginning of this? 
and he was like, oh man, it's actually on the thing. There's no way we can, you know, like. But that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's stuff like that, though, isn't it's it? The the, take. It's the magic. That, that's the one that's that you it. fight for, dude. Exactly. And I think that's I think that's why I love music so much, and it's obviously why you do too. Is like we look for those magic moments that can't be artificially uh, created like something in the matrix, right? It's like the magic just either happens or it doesn't, you know? It's like when Ed Van Halen played Eruption, a 22-year-old kid, it was magic, you know? To the wall, you know? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, all right, man. Um, we could, Dude, I could chat with you all day. It's so good to oh, see you, man. I'm, I'm so you happy too, for man. you that uh, all this stuff is going well. Um, what about guitars? Is the Strandberg anything crazy about that? Is that, have you got the square neck or any of that stuff? Uh, yeah, I mean this one's like literally you can you can get this. It's a stock model except for these. So these are like the brand new um, prog pickups they've called these. Um, they were designed by Michael Frank Brown. Do you know him? He did Eric Johnson's signature pickups and Guthrie's signature pickups. Actually, he was the like the mastermind behind these. So that's the only difference, but mine's actually, man, like, it's like the cheapest one. You can it's get. got the squared neck on it. Yes, it's got the Endura neck. I think every model of these has it now. So um, how do you feel about that coming from a traditional guitar neck? So, do you know, for years I've tried these and always thought, oh, wow, like, it feels really ergonomic and comfortable, but then I'd go back to, it like, a normal guitar, shall we say, and that would feel alien. Now, when it, it when it, when I, I I guess I got this in September last year, like when I sat down with it, I was like, "This makes sense." What Ola's done now, now it all makes sense. You know, if you sit down with your own gear and you're in your own home and you can just play, I was like, "This really does make sense." The only thing is sometimes like my thumb. You know, if you, I mean, we we both switch. I think, don't we? We have the yeah, the, yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, I, I switch and I don't. Yeah. Yeah, the only thing which I kind of have against it, if you like, is that sometimes I feel like it's telling me what my thumb needs to do. That's you know, how, that's a great way to describe it. That's how I always feel. It's like I play, I float around on it, but the moment I want to like disjoint this thing and do something, you know, bluesy yes. or rootsy, it's like it's like that neck kind of tells you what you're gonna do and what exactly, you're gonna do. man. It's going for like perfect technique. I can see what Ola's trying to do with it, but there's sometimes that as you say you want the grease don't you you know and to, yeah. to get that if say i'm coming up for a bend like that kind of thing the thumb has to be up and this can sometimes get in the way but i have tried he's got like a few different shapes of this now so yeah. like it's not just the one anymore i think yeah. like do you know for example pan nielsen yeah uh, yeah Man, he's great, he's, by the way. I love that guy. Oh, he's a he's such a he's a lovely little little dude, isn't he, man? But yeah, that thumb on his, I think it's a bit thinner on the back, so you feel it less. You don't you don't feel like it's telling you that you know you right. have to be behind, you know. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's way worth trying if you ever get the opportunity to do one, like or to have a play of one. Give it a go. I'm sure. I think you've tried them before, haven't you, Andy? Yeah, I've played them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think this past name, I, I want to say you had one that was like a faux telly. It was like a Strandberg kind of telly thing. Yes, with like the, the F hole, I think. Yeah, like something like that. Yeah, it was cool, yeah. man. Um, Great. Believe it or not, the thing that's always been weird to me is to look down and not see a headstock. Like, I don't know why that affects anything that I'm playing on the frets, but when I look down, it's like, it's almost like I could play it if I didn't look down. Yes, totally. Yeah, like yeah. When I, when I, it's like those gypsy jazz guitars where they have the dots that are in the wrong spots. I, that would freak me out. Yeah. As I long as you don't look that. at it, you're fine. Yeah, man. If someone's got a double dot twice, I know that's crazy, but that yeah. always throws me. Yeah. But the thing about having no headstock, it took me a couple of days at first. All of my bends and my vibrato were feeling like way out of tune. And I was like, yeah. what's going on here? And I didn't realize it's the counterweight, isn't it? On a, on yeah. a guitar that's got a headstock. Obviously. Well, the tension is different too. It's like playing a guitar that's got six on a side versus three on a side versus reverse headstocks. Like when I play exactly. something like uh, Firebird or something like that or JM or whatever, like it's like I'm pulling the wrong string too hard, you know? Yes, totally, totally. It's that kind of same thing really here. But eventually, once I got used to it, it's weird. When I went back to like a normal guitar shape 
that felt alien then. It felt oh, yeah. like that wouldn't work for me as well. I think it's just a case of, it's like anything, isn't it? You know, if you spend a few days with something, you, you, your body adapts, yeah. doesn't it, really? You know? And so long as you're still creating the same sounds, that's the key. This does certain things that, you know, on a traditional guitar, I'd struggle with. Whereas, like I say, with the thumb, that's something that this doesn't do so well, you know? So it's all yeah. about the balance, really, isn't yep. it? You know? Yep. Well, man, it's it's killer. I'm so glad you said yes to being on here, and, and I'm stoked for all the woodshed folks to kind of dig into what you do. And, and man, everybody go check out Jack. Uh, dude, it's great to see you. I know everything's good, dude, and and, and, I, and the record's awesome. So, man, thanks, thanks for being on here. And it's a pleasure. It's an honor to catch up with you again, man. <laughs> Next right, time, right. hopefully, we can do it with a beer. <laughs> I, 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 I'm counting the days that, that, that life can somehow get back to where it should be. You know what I mean? Exactly, man. Yeah, fingers crossed. All right, my brother. Take care, Jack. You too, man. Take it easy.